everybody, welcome back to the Serving Pleasure Podcast. Exotic Erotic. With your hosts, Wesley Corbola and Bailey Schultz. Orientalism is a way of seeing that imagines, emphasizes, exaggerates, and distorts differences of African, Arab, and East Asian peoples and cultures as compared to that of the West. It often involves seeing cultures as exotic, over-sexualized, backwards, uncivilized, and at times, dangerous. Uh, hey! hey. Oh. oh! Oh, hey! We didn't see you there. Oh, how long have you been there? How long have you been watching us? <laughs> uh. oh. Welcome to Serving Pleasure Podcast, colon... Exotic, erotic. I'm so embarrassed. (laughs) Um, Um, How is everyone doing? I'm Bailey. I'm Wesley. (laughs) I don't care how you're doing. (laughs) You're doing great now. (laughs) Because we have such a great... We got a great show lined up. We got a great show for you guys tonight, probably. Uh, (laughs) We can't predict it, although we have the ego to do just that. We'll make it. Um, Help us make this episode go viral. (laughs) Um, Share it. Tag your friends in the comments of the Facebook post. People love that. Yeah, I know. There's nothing I love more than having a notification on my Facebook and opening it up and someone tag me in a post. It makes you want to almost make that video go viral. It makes you want to tag your friends in it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know nothing makes a video go viral faster than the actual video itself saying, make, make this us go viral. viral. You know, it worked for Pizza Rat. It worked for Charlie Bit My Finger. Chocolate Rain. <laughs> it worked for Chocolate Rain. Um, and it worked for... Uh, oh, the Evolution of Dance. Evolution of Dance. I was going to mention uh, Grumpy Cat as the guest star on WWE Raw. And also every episode of Ellen. <laughs> they're all on YouTube, surprisingly. <laughs> and they're all viral. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all edited so they won't get taken down from YouTube. They're pitch bent. Yeah, they're pitch bent. Really um, low. And it's like inverted Give color. Give me love today. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> I'm the best I love giving white people money. I'm Ellen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got her catchphrase. I'm Ellen. <laughs> um, so, what happened last chapter? Um, they... Got some, uh, they... Um. (laughs) They were talking. (laughs) Lots of talking. They were were planning. Um, Let's just. You know, you know what happened. I I know we know what happened. I know what I just said jogged all of our collective. We're all like, oh yeah, okay. They were talking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, chapter nine. Um, this episode is titled um. TiVo it. Okay. Because this is from the from 2000. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. <laughs> from a phone booth at, the, at a gas station, Zahad called the clinic. His first step was to determine whether Manuel Estrellas had been taken into police custody and was, therefore, out of their reach. Crestline View, a female voice answered. Oh, Zahad. Sorry, I haven't been listening. Manuel Estrellas, please. A diesel truck lumbered into the station, drowning her response. Uh, Excuse me? I said he doesn't work here anymore. Can you tell me where to reach him? He wondered whether the police were already tracing the call. Surely they couldn't track every inquiry that came into the medical clinic. I'm sorry, we can't give out his home address or phone number, the woman said. He ought to hang up. But caution had never been Zahad's style. Does he have an email address or another work number, by any chance? There was a pause. Was she alerting someone? May I ask what this concerns? He had prepared a story, of course. 
Uh, my name is Mitchell Kahn. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Estrellas about uh, buying some life insurance. Very well rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> life insurance that's funny uh, yeah. she said he isn't married or anything oh can I put you on hold uh, no thanks he hung up and hurried to his motorcycle if the police were on their way Zahad didn't intend to stick around and wait for them he'd already checked the phone book to make sure there was no listing under the name Manuel Estrellas the only other possible connection to the man was Dr. Lowry, but the physician would be even more unlikely than the receptionist to reveal anything. Alice Frey might prove a useful connection, or a dangerous one. Her involvement with the doctor aroused Zahad's suspicions. He preferred to deal with her himself and keep her away from Holly and Sharif. He set a course for the Sunshine Lane Salon. Earlier today, when he swung by for reconnaissance, he determined that there was road work going on nearby. He's such a good detective. <laughs> <laughs> he had stared at all that and... He saw all the orange. <laughs> I'm gathering clues and I'm determining that there's some construction nearby. Water break. If water you're, break. If you're right next to a water cooler, this is your time. If you've got your smell vision go ahead and scratch the water portion of it and take a whiff <laughs> the sweet smell of water will <laughs> reach your nostrils earlier today when he swung by for reconnaissance he determined that there was road work going on nearby hence the blue coveralls and the hard hat as he drove he kept watch for any suspicious vehicle because it was legal here for a motorcycle to zip between lanes of traffic he moved in such a deliberately erratic manner that any car trying to keep pace would call attention to itself none did on the bike, he went through a fast food drive-in line and picked up a chicken sandwich. A construction worker eating a late lunch would attract less attention than a man loitering. Just admit you wanted a chicken sandwich, Zahad. That's okay. Oh, uh, no, no, there's no re- I this know. All, I'm all business. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty shop was located in a string of small businesses whose shared parking lot was half full. Between the small center and a supermarket lay a modest park. Along with a playground and a few wooden picnic tables, it offered a partial view of the salon. On the far side of the street sprawled a light industrial park. In front of it, a construction, construction work blocked a lane of traffic. As he'd told Sharif and Holly, Zahad wanted to see who visited Alice and who might be conducting surveillance on her. If he saw nothing disturbing, he would watch for an opportunity to approach her directly. Overhead, storm clouds bulked. As he parked behind the grassy area, Zahad wondered how soon the rain would start. The ominous weather created one advantage. It had discouraged anyone else from using the park. He checked his watch. 1.37 p.m. The chicken sandwich was greasy, but he'd long ago schooled himself not to notice that what went into his stomach. <laughs> A man in his position couldn't waste time on niceties. It's okay that he likes the chicken sandwich, too. No, it's not. He's a man of discipline. In front of the salon. He's a man of the desert. In front of the salon, a station wagon... I don't know what that means, but I'm saying it. In front of the salon, a station wagon bearing the name of a beauty supply company pulled into a slot. Whatever happened to station wagons? I like them because they look like hearses. Uh, they never existed. That's true. I forgot about that. They were an urban legend. <laughs> That's like, What? <laughs> What did I throw up in the back of then when I was younger? Uh, horse drawn buggy. Oh, yeah. You forgot that there were horses. I forgot. And it was not in the shape of. A buggy. No, this will make it. A young man carried a black sample case in stop inside. Zahad wondered how well the beauticians knew these salespeople and whether he might be able to sneak inside in such a guise. A while later, the man exited. He was followed out of the building by a middle-aged woman, her puffy hair tinted the color of champagne. As she drove away, Alexis arrived. The woman who emerged wore a scarf and carried a wig on a mannequin head. Zahad finished his sandwich. On the street, the workmen were collecting their orange cones. When they left, he would need to go also. At least he'd be able to get rid of the, this hat, which, despite the breeze, made his head sweat. Removing it, he shook back his hair. As he did, another woman came out of the salon, short and stocky, with gray-dappled brown hair. Alice. 
Trying to look casual, Zahav replaced his hat and watched her from the corner of his eye. If she got in her car, he decided to follow. Instead, however, she headed in his direction along the sidewalk. The path would carry her to within a dozen feet of him. Where was she going? To the supermarket or to meet someone? Those, those are the only options. <laughs> she, yeah, I'm, I mean, what I also didn't like was that Jacqueline included the uh, hypothetical plan that Sahad had yeah. in mind. If she had decided to do something, that he would uh, follow. follow. But she didn't do that, so that plan doesn't matter whatsoever. Also, it was kind of implied. Yeah. From his pocket, Zahad retrieved the copy of Holly's email address. He would seize this opportunity and then beat a rapid retreat. Shifting his balance, he started to rise when he glimpsed a movement on the street. It was a police cruiser coming abreast. Slowly, he sank onto his picnic bench. The police car stopped at the curb. The cop, who was solo, lowered the passenger window. Miss Frey. She stopped. Oh, hello, Officer Williams. I was coming to check on you. Everything all right? I'm just going to get some sandwiches at the the supermarket deli. Most of us don't get to eat until after the lunch crush. Zahad didn't dare look up, but her voice sounded strained. (laughs) Nothing happened? Nothing happening? No weird calls? Visitors? Etc.? We're all fine. The rest of the conversation was lost as a group of cars and trucks went by. Finally, Alice continued on her way. By the time the cruiser merged into traffic, she'd passed the rim of the park. Zahad would have to catch her on the way back. At least he'd learned that the salon wasn't being staked out. And evidently, she hadn't blabbed about hearing from Holly. If she had, the cops would be showing a lot more interest. The road crew loaded their gear into a truck. Zahad knew he couldn't stay here much longer. How long did it take to get sandwiches from a deli counter, anyway? Impatiently, he carried his trash to a receptacle. It was nearly three o'clock, and moisture laced the chill breeze. Zahadadron! Did I pronounce that correctly? The words startled him into scraping his hand on the edge of the trash can. He turned sharply. Alice Frey stood about four feet away. She must have cut through the back of the park instead of going into the supermarket. He pretended to be confused. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who you mean. I recognize you do from your photograph. She studied him with a steely determination. It's the hair. I saw it when you took off your hat. Straight and ragged, and such a coarse texture. We don't see much of that around here. Can I mention that the it, before it was mentioned that he was wearing the construction hat, the sweat was getting to him, and he took it off, and it seemed to imply that his hair had slicked back. Hmm. So, well, even if it hadn't even slicked back, it was implied that his hair was going to be messed up. Because of the construction hat and the sweat. Okay. And now she's saying the one identifier is his hair! (laughs) His iconic hair! (laughs) That's the Sahad hair! (laughs) The construction-worn hair. (laughs) Classic. Before he could respond, a movement on the street caught his attention. The police cruiser. It must have circled the block and come back. Keeping his hand out of the officer's line of sight, Zahad slipped it into his jacket. This time, he had brought a gun. Bye-bye, Alice. (laughs) She's gonna be blown away! She's gonna be swimming with the fishes. Out of the corner- Zahad's fishes. I felt that was necessary. In case people didn't understand. Yeah. Out of the corner of his eye, Sharif watched Holly stretch in her chair. The sight of her pleasing curves provided a welcome relief after his frustrating discovery on the internet. (laughs) He had learned that on Thursday, the day after tomorrow, a bill would be entered in Al-Qadar's parliament to nationalize regional industries. The timing couldn't be a coincidence. Although such a bill might have been in the works, someone was taking advantage of the sheik's absence. He must hurry back, yet it might be dangerous to return. And, after sitting beside Holly for the past hour, he found himself reluctant to think of leaving. An awareness of her filled his senses. The pearly curl, the pearly curve of her ear, the scent of her hair, and the dewiness of her cheek seemed to invite his touch. Her cheek is greasy. But he wanted to touch it. (laughs) He wants to wipe that grease off. (laughs) Even the tension of holding himself in check reminded Sharif that he was all male. 
<laughs> she stood. <laughs> I'm oh, Jacqueline. I think you mean all man. All male. All male implies that he's having a gender identity crisis. crisis. I guess she stood and wrapped her arms around herself. Are you cold? He asked. Her startled gaze met his, and he read the answer in her dilated pupils and parted lips. It wasn't a chill that made her react, but a need to stem her reaction to him. It is a bit cool in here, she said. I'll build the fire. That isn't necessary. I don't mind. Eager to occupy his body with something other than fantasies about Holly, Sharif paced to the hearth. He, like, did some pacing (laughs) on his way there. Back and forth (laughs) with the wood in hand. Yeah. (laughs) He selected sticks of firewood from a curved metal carrier and laid them in a pattern. Holly came to stand beside the hearth. Are you trying to get away from me? What makes you ask such a question? He demanded, keeping his gaze on the firewood. We've just spent an hour in each other's company. We've just spent an hour avoiding each other's gazes, and it's been hard work, hasn't it? She said. The minute I stood up, you scampered over here as if a demon were chasing you. (laughs) (laughs) The demon of love. <laughs> I always scamper away from demons. <laughs> Try and catch me. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> Can't catch me. I will catch you. No. <laughs> I will drag you to hell. I dare you. <laughs> I do not scamper. Said the sheik. You're avoiding the issue. She watched him steadily. Perhaps I was mistaken to ask you to sit by me. Sharif conceded as he worked. In my country, a man would never spend time alone with an unmarried woman, especially not one wearing such revealing clothes. What's revealing about them? Holly indicated the shirt and jeans Zahad had provided. Everybody dresses this way. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in America dresses that Everyone way. in the world dresses this way, because <laughs> I dress this way. <laughs> this is normal. <laughs> Not everyone has breasts that lift the fabric with every inhalation. <laughs> he said, standing and examining her frankly. Or hips so slim that the jeans slip down and bear your navel. <laughs> I'm picturing, like, he, he has a cold... staff, and he's gonna part her pants. <laughs> <laughs> he should just, like, God, take a shower or something. <laughs> or go back to building that fire, bring that sexual energy, yeah. and put it towards something else. Yeah. Pacing needlessly. <laughs> As his gaze traced this tempting sight, he couldn't resist the urge to clasp his hands around the bare flesh of her waist. She trembled beneath his touch, but didn't draw back. His thumbs traced the hollow of her ribcage and gently circled her navel. Holly swayed toward him. (laughs) Through the shirt, he could see the nipples spring erect, (laughs) and her face tilted upward, ready for his kiss. Should he take her now? He doubted she would refuse him. To make love would satisfy this swelling need in them both and ease his mind and spirit. With every inviting look, with every shuddering breath, Holly offered herself to him. A warrior was entitled to take whatever a woman gave freely. Why should he care that she was going to marry another man? But could he mate with her and walk away unchanged? So, in that question, we discover that his intention of having sex is is to to mate. Yeah, is to impregnate her. I want another baby. Just in case, you know, shit with Ben is kind of, you know, we don't know if Ben's going to make it through this. <laughs> the uh, Jagley barely remembers him. He's not here right now. No, she, I feel like she does. She always, like, a, he gurgles. Like, well, I feel like it's, it's. An afterthought. It, yeah, it's, like, always included after this long exchange of sexual tension. And then she's like. Fuck Ben, I uh, and Ben giggles. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm willing to bet after whatever this thing is gonna turn out to be Ben's that we'll have some something. verification of where Ben is. 
But could he mate with her and walk away unchanged? In making love, he would be giving her a part of himself. When sperm. She, when His she, sperms. <laughs> When she was gone, could he honestly believe that he would feel no loss? Ruefully, Sharif acknowledged that he did not know himself as well as he had believed. This vulnerability to Holly might extend far beyond these few hours in this isolated cabin. He could not afford the distraction from his people and his duty, nor did he wish to cause her any injury. We must not pursue a flirtation. <laughs> He turned away and busied himself positioning wood chips around the logs as kindling. Why? Holly asked. A moment ago, you couldn't keep your hands off me. She doesn't sound at least at all like hot right now over. <laughs> <laughs> she, she just sounds normal. She's like, yeah. why? A moment ago, you yeah. couldn't keep your hands off me. You're a very tempting woman. I wish he would have just called her a temptress. <laughs> You're yeah. a very temptress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no other the grammar change. No. It's just... Not so tempting you can't resist me, obviously. She sounded hurt. Sharif refused to discuss his own uncertainties. Instead, he flared. I have learned the deepest love a man and a woman can experience. Once in a lifetime is enough. <laughs> <laughs> lowered. Was she angry? Sharif wasn't sure. Or might she be contemplating her own feelings for Trevor? She don't have feelings for Trevor! It's, it's all just a They're just adding insult to injury every time they bring him up, honestly. Talk about an afterthought, Jesus Christ. As he retrieved a box of matches, she said, Your wife must have been a very special woman. How did you two meet? It was an arranged marriage. Sharif tossed a match into the kindling. Arranged? Her voice sounded tremulous. How long before the wedding did you meet? Yeah, three days. He said. Three days? I was 22, and I just graduated. <laughs> the mood between them is totally fine now. <laughs> it had just graduated from college. My uncle, Amy's father, chose my wife. After my parents were killed, he became my second father and head of our tribe. Although, under the dictatorship, he could wield no real power. Tribe? Yeah. Is he still alive? Sadly, he died during the revolution, after years of poor health. Sharif said. When he did me the great favor of choosing the right woman for me, Mary. You didn't object? She asked. Either you or your bride? Of course not. We shared the same goal, the liberation of our country, he said. Yoda came to join me at the camp where Zahar and I were trading in North Africa. We knew very soon that she would be happy, that we would be happy together. It's just North Africa. Yeah. You know, <laughs> a little bit of Libya, a little bit of Algeria, you know, a little bit of Egypt thrown in there. He doesn't know. He doesn't know <laughs> where he a little was. bit of everything. He's North Africa. <laughs> What if you hadn't liked her? Holly asked. I would have married her anyway. Sharif said. What a hot bud. No, that's not the real one. That's not really what it said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, ab living. This is crazy. To do otherwise would have brought shame on my family. And hers. I could never do anything like that, she said. The match died. <laughs> she kind of is. <laughs> She's... Oh, never mind. The match died without sparking a fire. I would like Symbolic. to add that since the moment that he lit the lit the match and threw it in, start the fire, and from the point where it's died, a, about a two minute conversation has transpired, and matches are relatively small. Yep. The match died without sparking a fire. He sucks at lighting a fire too. He lit another and, instead of tossing it, slid it into place. Should have just tossed a lit cigarette in. Yeah, that would have been more badass. The flame licked toward his finger, and he released it at the last possible moment. 
Was your own marriage not also arranged for practical considerations? He said. Your groom is older and well established in business. You can hardly pretend that your emotions have run away with you. Okay, I'm glad that he brought that up too. Yeah. I wish, actually, I wish it would have just been never brought up. You only wish that because I said I was glad that he brought it up. Yeah. But he isn't a stranger, she pointed out. He's a friend, someone I, I know I can rely on. As long as I can remember, Trevor's been there for me and Jazz. Yeah, because... And nowhere in that did she say, well, I love him. Nope. It, the, it, she starts with, he isn't a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the wood caught on fire. The wood caught fire at last. I did not realize you had known him for such a long time. Trevor and my father were best friends ever since they served together in the military. Still hugging her knees, Holly let the fire glow bathe her face. So he was like an uncle to you. <laughs> He's being silly. He's being facetious. I mean, how? Such an intimate conversation indicated a deeper bond between these two than Sharif had suspected. <laughs> what a, like, on-the-nose sentence. Yeah. <laughs> like, we really needed to uh, have that clarification. Although not superficially romantic, it might in time produce a satisfying marriage. He was more than that. When I was 15, Dad smashed his car into a tree. He had a drinking problem, you see. Holly's expression grew distant, as if she were watching an old movie that only she could see. <laughs> Three years later, Mom died of cancer. I don't know what we would have done without Trevor. Your sister must, uh, must have been a minor at the time, Sharif said. Who raised her? I did, Holly said. Trevor helped out whenever they got too wi- whenever she got too wild. He was the executor of our parents' estate. Not that there was much of an estate to execute. Your parents did not have insurance? <laughs> For a great little rate, you could get online. <laughs> Go to the general and save some time. I know that's car insurance, you guys, but, you know, whatever. Leave, leave those negative YouTube comments below. Just, Keep, leave we, them we, at the door. We, 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 his admiration grew for this woman who had, been take, who had taken responsibility for her sister at such a young age. She shrugged. No, and, and Mom had used up their savings on medical bills. They didn't even own a house, just a piece of land about 50 miles from here, in the middle of nowhere. I wonder if that will come into use. Dad won it in a mm. poker game, I think. Trevor rented it to some hermit types who live in a mobile <laughs> home. <laughs> what did you live on? He asked. Social Security survivors' benefits, plus I worked part-time while I was going to beauty school, she said. Trevor and his wife helped out, too. I'm sure the money came out of their own pockets. His wife? Sharif hadn't know the man's, known of the man's previous marriage. We used to call her Aunt Karen. Holly stretched her hands toward the flames. They got divorced about five years ago. Trevor said they just drifted apart. This woman accepts your marriage to her former husband? Yeah, this is creepy. Such a romantic tangle might easily occur in one of the large households in Barim, Sharif reflected. His Aunt Salima claimed no soap opera could compare. Karen remarried and moved a couple and moved east a couple of years ago, she said. We lost contact. The phone rang. It was about time he heard from Zahad, the Sheik thought, though he although he was sorry to break off this quiet interchange with Holly. Yeah. This accursed weather. Harry, Amy, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Amy spoke tartly in their native tongue. Can you believe I'm stuck in Chicago in a snowstorm? I can't get to Los Angeles until tomorrow. Be careful. There are good men looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> he considered warning her not to come, but then who would take the baby? I will be on my guard, as always. His cousin had undergone extensive security training. Our first step must be to get you a lawyer so you can stop sulking around, skulking around in the bushes or wherever you are. Had you heard what the Parliament is trying to pull off? Yeah, they want to steal a factory. He heard the hardness in his own voice. <laughs> we must stop them uh, one way or another. <laughs> they're betraying everything we fought for in Alcatraz Revolution. Of course. Besides, they're not only greedy, they're incompetent, she said. Within a year, the industry will be riddled with corruption. I have instructed Harry to get out of his laboratory and speak out on television, but heaven knows what he will say. 
The prospect of bashful Harry in his white lab coat trying to debate with some silver-tongued politician was daunting. Catch the first flight you can, Sharif said. <laughs> I don't care how much the lawyer costs as long as she can send me home. Behind Amy, an airport loudspeaker made an announcement too garbled to comprehend. And, <laughs> and you kind of like here's a hot voice. <laughs> and she... <laughs> go. Airplanes, go. <laughs> go, go, go! <laughs> dive, dive! And she had wait, and she waited until it ended. I have a list of firms in Los Angeles, the ones who have handled the big trials. <laughs> They're gonna get a uh, Kardashian. <laughs> His cousin said when she could make herself heard, "They will do a good job." They will call press conferences and make much of themselves. She <laughs> had little patience with public relations, which was why he let Amy handle such matters for their province. I do not want to be tired in the media. Try. Try, uh, I don't want to be tired in the media. Okay, maybe they won't get Rob Kardashian. Do you have a better suggestion? She asked. Listen, I have to go check whether that announcement was for me. I will call when I know more, all right? Yes, of course. Thank you, Amy. And be careful. Whatever. Sharif clicked <laughs> off the phone. Though the, through the slanted blinds, he could see a leaden sky. But it wasn't nearly as dark as the future of Barum would be if his people were robbed of their economic security. Oh, the, the metaphor. Boo! <laughs> oh, Jacqueline. It's not that deep, fam. Oh. <laughs> his deep ache for Holly, his concern over Jazz's death, none of this mattered. Despite the possibility of walking into a trap, he and Ben must go home as soon as possible, which meant he must secure an attorney on his own. Who knew how long Amy might be held up? I need a criminal lawyer, he said. Do you have any suggestions? Trevor mostly handles civil contracts, but he's active in the Bar Association. I'm sure he knows someone. Rising to her feet, Holly dusted off her jeans. A lot of dust on those jeans. <laughs> Somebody good enough to get me released on bail, he said. I can ask, she hesitated. You really want me to call him? Do you uh, object? Is that a court joke that he just made? A court pun? No, I guess not. But isn't his phone likely to be tapped? We have to assume so. You know his phone number? Yes. No. Her cheeks flushed. I should, shouldn't I? But he got a new one last month and I haven't memorized it. Okay? That's why I don't know it. Oh, Dad, Jesus Christ. Women are hysterical. Sharif weighed the possibility of simply choosing a lawyer from the phone book. No, he needed the best. Besides, from what Holly had told him, Trevor deserved to be reassured about her well-being. Here's what we must do, he said. You will call him, but not from here. Take the truck and go to a payphone at, like, at least five miles away. Resolutely, Sharif squelched his own misgivings. I will stay with Ben. <laughs> Dark hair tangled around her startled face. You want me to go out alone? There was a slim chance his enemies might spot the pickup, but he considered it unlikely. Also, for his country's sake, he couldn't gamble on being arrested now. By yourself, you are less likely to be noticed. He said. Together, you, me, and Ben are rather obvious, don't you think? All right, she said. I'll go if you think I should. Yes, he said. It is necessary. The police car swung to the curb. Keeping one hand inside his jacket, Zahad considered whether he should shove past Alice and make a break for the motorcycle. In that moment of indecision, he heard the cop call. Hey, Miss Frey, you all right? This guy bothering you? No, no, we're old friends, she said. What's up, Officer Williams? I forgot to ask you something. For my wife's birthday, I want to give her a, uh, you know, a... Uh, Beauty makeover. <laughs> Did your salon have a package like that? Of course. Alice betrayed no sign of nerves. Just call me and we'll set the whole thing up. Great, thanks. With a wave, he drove off. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs> I like him. Zahad didn't relax until the cruiser was out of sight. When he turned to Alice, she folded her arms and pierced him with a stare. All right, Mr. Adran. What have you done with my baby? Your baby? Ben Rivers is as close to a grandchild as I'm likely to get, given that my son shows no inclination to get married. The woman was half Zahad's size and a good fifteen years his elder, but she confronted him without fear. Where is she? 
Where is he? They're and both, where's Holly? They're both safe. Raindrops began to patter on his hard hat. I found them one. <laughs> is it all right if we step out of this rain? Fine. But don't think I'm letting you off the hook. She headed for a roofed barbecue site so fast that Zahad's long legs had to take extra strides to catch up with her short ones. <laughs> <laughs> There's such a more succinct way of saying that. At the shelter, Alice executed a quick, expert fluff of her silver-laced brown hair. This place dry enough for you, she said. Good. Now, why were you watching me? He handed her Holly's email address. She wants you to contact her. The phones are becoming too, too dangerous. Clear gray eyes scrutinized him. Why is she operating with you? What have you done to her? I assure you, despite our actions... We're not criminals! Despite our criminal actions, <laughs> Zahad said. Sheik Al Khalil <laughs> was only reclaiming his own son, as is his right. Ben's an American, Alice said. <laughs> he belongs here. And I'm proud to be an American, for at least I know I'm free, and I proudly stand up. Next to you. If you want to debate custody, talk to a lawyer. Zahad pressed on. Griff Goldbar? <laughs> <laughs> um, Griff Goldbar says... <laughs> Griff Goldbar says that Jasmine was tricked into becoming a surrogate. We need to reach a man who used to work at the clinic. Manuel Estrellas. Do you know why do you think I would? Mm, because you are a person who referred her to Dr. Lowry. He didn't actually know that that, was the, that that was true, but it was a reasonable inference. The salon owner took an instinctive step backward. It was the first time she'd so shown any sign of being intimidated. Look, I just want Ben to stay in this country. I'm not involved in this clinic business. You said jazz to the doctor. I don't think she ever actually saw him for a checkup, Alice protested. Lots of people make referrals. That doesn't mean I'm responsible for unforeseen consequences. Like murder? He said. She started. I resent your implication. He'd gone too far, Zahab realized. He didn't mean to antagonize her. Then I apologize. Please, we need your help. Her gaze met his squarely. I want to find out who killed Jazz, and that's the only reason I'm going to help you, Mr. Adron. Dr. Lowry's nurse is one of my customers. I can nose around. Thank you. I'll even throw in a free haircut when this is over, <gasps> she added. You need one. He couldn't help smiling. Bounce the bounce. Oh, stop it. <laughs> There was something appealing about this strong-willed woman yeah. who was, after all, only trying to protect a beloved child. His own mother had stood up for him until she died, much too young. I'm sorry you cannot keep this boy, he said. But it is your son, not my sheik, who owes you grandchildren. He suffers from what we call a fear of commitment, uh, Alice sighed. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 In Alcadar, the elders arrange marriages for men like him. I doubt he'd go for it, she eyed Zahad shrewdly. What about you? Are you married? Well, no. Why haven't they leg shackled you yet? <laughs> he saw no point in evasiveness. My father lives in Germany with my stepmother. He has declared her eldest son, my younger half-brother, as his heir. No one cares whether I get married. He's picking at his nails. At yeah. This point. <laughs> Kicking the dirt. <laughs> You're not bad looking, oh. Alice said. <laughs> Wasn't us just too far off the mark, huh? Yeah. You could find a wife on your own once you have a decent haircut. We look forward to receiving any information you can unearth about this man, Astraeus. He said, not bothering to dignify her last comment with a response. With a terse nod of farewell, Zahad dashed into the thickening rain. Bye-bye. He, he had much to do. There was no more time to waste on women who pined for grandchildren and prattled of romance.
The minute the pickup pulled out of the clearing, Sharif knew that he should never have allowed Holly to take such a risk. He also knew that it was only his fear that told him so. In any case, there was no way to stop her now. She had taken a cloned phone in case of an emergency, but he couldn't call her on a stolen number. On the bed, the baby was still dozing. With each passing hour, Sharif noticed more details about him. (laughs) (laughs) It's because the baby's changing. (laughs) Oh my god! He's like baby (laughs) Jack-Jack. I saw this once in The Incredibles. In the future, 2006. (laughs) (laughs) On the... um... How could anyone miss the auburn highlights in his dark hair and the way his little mouth pursed? Apparently he did. Yeah. (laughs) Minutes ticked by. Which direction had Holly gone? How could he be sure the assassins wouldn't spot her when he didn't know how they'd managed to locate him in the past? Craving action, hemmed in by four walls and a heavy sense of responsibility, Sharif grabbed the remote and switched channels. He was tired of seeing the same pictures over and over of himself and Zahad. There! Seeing Amy's husband on CNN, he upped the volume. People (laughs) around the world are just beginning to realize how wonderful Chupa Cloth is. Although Harry wore his customary wire-rimmed glasses, he stood up straighter than usual in a silky tailored suit. No doubt Salima had selected it. The synthetic is (laughs) chemically indistinguishable from the natural form. Mr. Haroon, the interviewer said. Do you think this attempt to nationalize your industry is time to take advantage of Sheikh Al-Khalil's fugitive status? Of course it is! It sounds like he's a toddler. <laughs> Harry blinked as if taken a- He's got the same voice as Ben. <laughs> Harry blinked as if taken aback by his own forcefulness. <laughs> My wife and I aren't going to sit by and let our people get trampled. Realistically, is there anything you can do to stop this encroachment? The man said. We want to remind President Durad that he still needs Bahrain's support to maintain his coalition. Harry spoke with more confidence now. (laughs) We are, you might say, hanging tough. Good for you! (laughs) Sharif said aloud, glad to see his cousin's husband rising to the occasion. His exhilaration was short-lived. The slap of rain against the roof brought him back to the cabin and to the reality that Holly was out there driving in his downpour on her way to telephone the man she planned to marry. According to his watch, it was 3.20 p.m. She should be back by 4. There would still be time for him to call a lawyer today, if everything went well. End of chapter 9. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. I'm still turned on by that (laughs) close sex scene. I'm still turned on by the tension between Zahad and Alice. Alice. Oh, man. Alice was going to jump him. Jump his bones. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I love any chapter that Alice is in. It's really a pleasure. I love any chapter that Harry is in. (laughs) <laughs> so only this chapter. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, he's great. Um. Okay, so we have the tribal. Yeah, there was some more language sprinkled throughout. There wasn't like consolidated in any one yeah, sentence. Yeah, or... well, there wasn't a super super bad one like the last time or whatever. They're still bad. Oh yeah, none of this is good. You um... know, you guys have learned, but you've listened to the intro. Um. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Probably nine times now. Ten. What have we learned this chapter? We learned that so ne- Zahad has a Zahad's, motorcycle. He has a sweet hog. <laughs> That's who I'm rooting for in all of this, is Zahad's hog. And he Zahog. Is... <laughs> it is Zahog. Get to Zahog. <laughs> Get to Zahog. <laughs> <laughs> he is deaf. So deaf. <laughs> um, we have um, we've discovered that he has he's self conscious about wanting to eat chicken sandwiches, which is like, and I hope he can understand. I, I hope that we have some character growth. I hope he's able to eat them without that guilt. By the end, that's all I want out of this book. <laughs> that's the only. Resolution. I hope there's a sex scene between him and that chicken sandwich. Oh my god, he's gonna bang a chicken sandwich. 
Sharif and so Holly I, are so, getting pretty close. Yeah, but he... Uh, guys, don't get your hopes up, because now he's fucking put his foot down again and isn't... But he lifts it, like, the next chapter every single time. I know, but... He's, he's nothing but a hound dog. He is all male. He is all male. He is all male. He's <laughs> all reminded himself of that. How many more chapters do you think he'll be until the Hod and... No, that's a Hod. Sharif and Holly, uh, boink. I, she's dragging it out. I really think we still got a while. Yeah? Probably three chapters at least. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking... I feel like there'll still be a few more back and forths. Yeah. Will they, won't they? Um. Yeah, so I don't know. There's not much else to talk about. It was mostly action, which... You guys, the, the we're chapters, not gonna patronize you, you know. The chapters where they don't spend the entire time planning. Yeah. Actually, the more time that, um... Holly and Sharif spend apart, the stronger the chapter seems to be. Yeah. Or where they're not strictly talking to one another. Yeah, that's the worst. Um. Um, so what do you rate this chapter? Three, uh, three archaeologists. Yeah. Now make that three and a half archaeologists. Damn, top or bottom half? Uh, left split, or right? Split down the middle. Left or right? His left or middle. right? Middle. <laughs> All right, well, I give it whatever the Ikea by the Mall of America has on Yelp. I give it the same rating. Four, so it's four. Four. We all know the rating for that Ikea. In Stop Bloomberg? playing coy. In, in like, is it Bloomington or Bloomberg? Bloomington, Minnesota. If you know. Please help me. <laughs> Give our video a thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> you know the town where Mall of America is. Unsubscribe to our channel and send us hate mail. Uh, oh, by the way, please subscribe to our channel. I don't think we have any subscribers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, I feel like besides our, me, I don't. Ethan? I don't even think I'm subscribed. Maybe Ethan. I'm not selling it. I you should. I will. I will right yeah. now. Um, Ethan, also, do you have a YouTube channel? Comment below. Also, <laughs> send us some fan art. <laughs> of us. Of us. Of reading. the host. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Okay, well, anyway, whatever. So that's the end of Only if you're nine. good at art, though. I don't want any crappy drawings. I'm just gonna get offended. Yeah. Bye, my lovelies. Have a blessed day. <laughs>